want to keep a man's attention. Men over 40 need this to have a healthy, happy relationship. We're going to dive into this conversation. Why do we consistently talk about the over 40 crowd? Because there's a big, gigantic difference for those individuals that are in their 20s and 30s versus those that are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and even 70s. Because midlife is radically different. Why? Because there's a different need in relationship when you're in the baby-making years or wanting a family phase of your life versus those of us that are most likely, I would say, 75% of singles over 45 years old are divorced. And often probably we'd say 75% of them have children. And I'm ballparking this number. Okay. And with that, two people that are in their 40s, oftentimes have over 40, I should say, have a fully curated life. And when two people have a fully curated life, one of the challenges is to find a relationship where you can blend your lives together. And so we're going to talk about this because I think it's important to understand the difference. You see, a lot of dating advice is based on a much younger demographic. A lot of scientific studies are based on the biological needs of a 20 and 30 year old versus those needs for people that are in their 40s, 50s, and even 60s. And so one of the things I've observed when it comes to keeping a person's attention is that oftentimes there's some cases where women overinvest in a relationship. They overinvest in um, they overinvest in the relationship. They overestimate the other person's desire within a relationship. They overestimate these things. Now, sometimes this overinvestment or overestimation appears to be what's known as chasing. Chasing. See, that's not chasing to me. See, I recognize that many of you ladies suff struggle because most men are actually winging it when they're over 40 because they don't understand what's the purpose of a relationship. What's the purpose of a relationship? You know, sadly, most people are dating. If you're not familiar with my chart, the three types of people actively dating today, this is merely a fact, not an opinion. 20% of the population are users. They're in it for short-term game. They're love bombers. They're players. They're gold diggers. They're entitled people. They only care about themselves. And while I say over here that 20% are what's known as grower builders, they have their act together. They're very clear about what they want. The vast majority in the middle, 60% are what I call spenders. They want companionship on occasion. They want connection on occasion. They want sex at their beck and call. They have no direction. Oftentimes their life is in chaos. And they put you in what's known as a placeholder or they spend time with you. See, what happens when you find yourself with a spender is you might be over-investing in a relationship, thinking that that will keep a man's attention, thinking that by, and, and then again, I also said you overestimate him being a grower builder because the initial stages of dating is so amped up on the chemical component of two people that they oftentimes miss the deeper need or understanding or purpose of a relationship. I want you to write this down. What's the purpose of a relationship? Really think it through. What's the goal? Now, a lot of people find themselves in circumstances that are hooking up. They find themselves in circumstances where they're in a situation ships. And oftentimes they find themselves in a casual relationship where there's an agreement to monogamy and exclusivity, but there's no real deep building of something greater. You see, the hard part for those of us in midlife is many people are gun shy. They're afraid to remarry. Marrying, re marrying means we're going to build something together. And so what we find today here in the United States is people live two separate lives and they occasionally get together and share their lives, but then it's not, it's, you know, there's a mismatch that occurs. And then women are thirsty. How do I keep this man's attention? Well, I'm going to offer you up five things today that might shift your perspective going forward. And my hope is by learning this, by coming from a place of knowledge, you operate in your sovereignty. You operate in a space of what is known as self-love. This is my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help and Spiritual Word. There's a link below to get a copy of my book.
So ladies, I know this title says want to keep a man's attention. Stop focusing on the guy. <laughs> That's my first thing to share with you. Stop focusing on the guy. Focus on the relationship you want. Some of you know my rhetoric. I'm looking for a relationship where we spend three or four days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in our personal or professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together or getting married. That's the relationship I seek. Okay? Now, I'm clear. That's my vision. That's the purpose. And the beginning is three or four days and nights a week. Eventually, I want to live with someone. Now, what's most important is understanding yourself. Know yourself. Know your love attachment style. If you're not familiar with the book, Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller, read this book thoroughly to know what your love attachment style is. Learn what your triggers are, the things that have triggered you. Look at your past relationships and really examine them from a place of where you might be triggered. But Jonathan, I just seem to find narcissists and non-committal men. That's not, don't focus on them, focus on you. What triggers you? What's your must-haves in relationship? What are your deal breakers? Have you healed from your past relationships? The more you know thyself, the greater chance you can have of being in a relationship where you keep each other's attention going like it's friendship on fire. Know your values. Know the vision you seek in your life. And most importantly, learn effective communication skills. If you're not familiar with the work of Marshall Rosenberg, write that name down, Marshall Rosenberg, go into YouTube, start watching the videos on how to express yourself in an emotionally mature way. Now, one of the fundamentals I think that causes so much angst are our scripts that we've been indoctrinated, that men are supposed to do this and women are supposed to do that. And it's the scripts that cause a lot of friction. A man must prove himself. He must climb to the highest room of the tallest tower. See, the best relationships are where people treat it as a two-lane street. They're mutually making effort with one another. There's no expectation based on the gender. If you haven't read the book, if the Buddha dated, throws out the BS gender rhetoric and says, how can we connect at a heart-centered level? How can we mutually invest in one another? And when you can operate from a partnership perspective from the very first date, you actually set yourself apart from every other woman out there that he'll want to give you his attention. Show him your playful, your flirty, your fun side. You know, I'm going to tell you something. I mean, I, I I witness a lot of women going on a first date with resting bitch face. I mean, there is literally an attitude going in. Show up with a gigantic smile. Show that you're flirty, you're playful, you're someone that is, you know, because the fruit of a relationship is the play with one another. I have a propensity of being a little too serious, so I'm laughing at myself when I say this, okay? But just recognize that this is a very common challenge as we go in defensive, we go in with judgments of resentments, of anger, of bitterness and jadedness, and we've lost our joy. I say we, I'm included in this category. By the way, is this sinking in with you? Is this resonating with you? Please let me know. This is a coffee mug given by a client. Earlier, I shared the importance of self-love. What is self-love? It's our sovereignty. It's about our sovereignty. It's about holding space for ourselves to be our best version of ourselves. Independence and self-love isn't about give a man space and just lean back in your feminine energy and you'll just do everything you need because if you just lean back in your feminine energy, he will chase you, he'll chase you, he'll chase you. The book, The Rules indoctrinated an unhealthy game-playing approach to love. But it's not sustainable. It isn't going to last for a very long time when, you, when you're playing a game. Instead of leaning back, I want you to lean into your sovereignty. I want you to lean into your self-worth. I want you to lean into your feelings. And I want you to learn how to express your feelings because the fifth component 
to keep a man's attention is your vulnerability, your capacity to express your needs, wants, and desires in a way that can be seen, heard, and understood. See, sadly, a lot of men are stoic. I get it. It's frustrating. It's frustrating to be with stoic men. But believe it or not, when you lead by example, when you start expressing in yourself in a way, I remember dating a woman once. She was a master at um, compassionate communication. And it helped, it helped me become more of a compassionate communicator. When you lead by example, when you, and you express your needs, it's so radically important to express what your needs are. And if that person isn't willing to meet your needs, is it really the person that you want to be with? Look at dating and relationships in the over 40 category is not for the faint of heart. We have to have, we, we, we have to act as grown-ups if we want to have any chance for relationship success. And that means being an intentional about your needs, wants, and desires, and expressing in a way, as I said earlier, that can be seen, heard, or understood. Hey, it's 11-11 right now. <laughs> All right, I think you get the gist of what I'm talking about. You want to keep a man's attention? It's not about keeping a man's attention. It's about getting clear as to who you are, what you want. Be radically honest. Be vulnerable. Be authentic. Be transparent. Lay your cards on the table. That means reviewing your past in a healthy way and then establishing the rules of engagement. What it is, is the purpose of this dynamic and what you seek in a relationship. And then when you find someone who matches what you want, you have a greater chance for success, especially if there's that chemistry piece in there. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Let me know. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Post a comment below. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video with your friends. Please hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And make sure you hit that notification bell on your phone as well. Um, and also, if you want to connect with me directly, there's links below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. There's a link to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery. There's a link to follow me on Instagram, all in the show notes below. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow. Give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.